<laughs> you know what's amazing with this Instagram Live is there, there are all these little features that they keep adding. And, and depending upon what day we do our Instagram Live with, you know, stand together, they change. They change all the time. And, and it's not like I have like a direct dial in, you know, to, uh, to, to Mark Zuckerberg to be like, hey, Mark, let me just ask you a quick question with Instagram Wait. Live. I'm surprised you don't have that. You're Dahani Jones. What do you, what do you mean? Ted <laughs> Harris, you can find anybody. <laughs> but I, I, will, I will tell you this. I, I did make a couple phone calls to people on Instagram because I just love the fact of how powerful Instagram Live has become, mm -hmm. right? Being able to have these, like, in-person conversations where if you completely submerge yourself into the screen, it feels like you're actually in someone's house. That's true. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so before before we get started, I just wanted to um, just welcome everybody in to Stand Together Live. This is a, a phenomenal opportunity for us to just really um, bring people together. Uh, and there's real power in helping helping people. Jay, I know that one of the things that's really most important in your life is this notion of, uh, of gratitude. And that's kind of, kind of uh, what we what we ultimately talk about here, mm -hmm. uh, but stand together. That's what we do. Um, offer those that are at home right now nuggets of inspiration, nuggets of hope, motivation because we've just been in our house, and so this is, gives us an opportunity for us to get out um, today for everybody um, that, that's I mean, joining on Stand Together channel again. Jay Harris, is, isn't that what it's all about, really? At absolutely. Day? And, and I hope. We're going to come through this, and I hope we maintain this when, we're, when all this is over. Because if we lose that sense of community that we've gathered now, yep. then, then why do it? You know what? Yeah, why? Just keep it. Jay Harris is uh, one of the longest tenured at ESPN. Congratulations on, on up your, your contract. I know that I, – I know, I know, I know you're probably like, you know, that's, just, that's part of the job. But I will tell you this, the amount of time that you've spent within the industry from where you came from before to where you are now, I just wonder, did, did you ever think that you would have done so much, talked to so many people, influenced so many individuals and become a mentor? You're like, you're the mentor that I never had. <laughs> I, I'm sitting here thinking, like, I'm talking to the guy that I wish I would have talked to before I got even into the television world. Um, I, I, I think about it every now and then especially when I'm talking to young people. Um, I've just, I've enjoyed the journey, man. It's, it's, you take it one day at a time and you try to build something and you realize that you haven't built anything without the people that have helped you along the way. So you take that attitude and you help, uh, help people coming up behind you. Uh, you enjoy what you're doing currently. Like I, every time I go to work, every time I do a show, I anchor mostly with Hannah Storm now. Every, every time, every time Hannah and I do a show, I just, I just enjoy it, man. I, I like I like watching her work because she's mm. so dag good. Right. Uh, so it, it's every day is something new. It's the same thing, but it's something new because it, the news is different every day. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. My dad told me this one thing. My dad, who's no longer with us, he uh, he said he used to watch. He said, son, when I watch you on television, <laughs> it's almost like you don't even have a job. I said, what do you mean, dad? <laughs> you're, up there, you're enjoying yourself. You're having fun. You, 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 you're talking that, that talk you talk and, and, and you know what you're doing. And a lot of people go to work. They go to jobs. They don't like them. They complain about them. They change jobs. You know what? But you have something that you enjoy. So you, you found you followed your passion. And I said, you know, that makes a lot of sense because I go to work, but I don't really go to work, man. I, mm -hmm. go, to, I go to that place. I go to the four letter place and I do my thing and hang out and we talk and put on some makeup, talk about sports, and I get home. <laughs> and it's just, I know, I know every time I do a show, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to figure out a vaccine for this virus. Mm. Uh, we're not curing any diseases. We're talking sports, man. We're, we're, we're providing a distraction, and we're, 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 we're talking about our passions. So why can't I, ha if I can't have fun doing that, I should do something else. Yeah, well, we definitely have a lot of fun on Stand Together Live, and for everybody out there, you know, we're helping raise awareness around Give Together Now. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can go to givetogethernow.org, you can contribute in, in any way, shape, or form. And it really helps those have been, who have been financially affected um, by this crisis uh, because of COVID-19. 
Um, up until this point, just giving some everybody a heads up, we've raised $44.9 million. And that's affected the lives. Thank you. Um, and to every, that's everybody out there watching. That's all because of you. Um, and that's, that's because, uh, because of the contributions to, of so many people. And I just want to give people a heads up. You know, this week, this past Tuesday was Giving Tuesday. And we've added a different feature to Give Together Now where you can give kindness. And, um, and if, if you post a, a post a picture, and I'll explain a little bit uh, further just to be specific, if you share what kindness looks like, so get, like in your community, if you post an act of kindness or, or what you did experiencing or, or you experiencing kindness and you tag Stand Together Foundation and you hashtag Give Together Now, post on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram and that's it. And one of our, um, one of our community moderators will see that and um, a family that is eligible will receive $500. We are giving this money on behalf of you giving kindness. Um, so I love doing this. If you can tell, like, I get so excited to talk to people because there are people sitting at home that want these nuggets, nuggets of hope. But, and, and going back into your career, you know, Pittsburgh to Connecticut, do you, do you have, a, do you have a, a, an affinity for either of the two or do you feel both close, closely connected to both, um, both cities? We've been here eight Ooh, since 2003. So what is that, 17 going on, 18 yep. years? I, honestly, it's the longest place that I've ever personally lived <laughs> um, at one time. Uh, Pittsburgh is second longest. I would say Pittsburgh is where I grew up professionally. Uh, that's where I had my first full-time uh, radio job, and I moved over into television. Um, Chapel Hill is mm. where I grew up as a, as a young pup from third grade to uh, <laughs> high school in Norfolk, sprinkled in and, and a year in Athens, Greece, because my, my mom remarried and we went over to, to, to Greece for a year. So it was between all those different cities that sort of became who you are. Pretty much. I think about from, from the world of football, I always say that when I got to New York, that was the place that raised me. When, mm -hmm. I, got to, when I got to Philadelphia, it, the city tra taught me some challenging, um, taught me some lessons. And mm -hmm. when I finally ended up in Cincinnati, uh, that's where it ultimately polished me. Yeah, and I, and I think that as a, as a player, you know, your your career is pretty much set based upon the sport that you play. But I was able to diversify, and I think from your perspective, you started off in in the news world and then moved into the world of sports. You know, what was what was that journey like? Because even get into the details of W R A P all the way up to like e the four letter word that you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, all right. It's a long story, but I'll try and condense it. Um, I, got, I got to WRAP um, with a phone call. I was working at a telecommunications gig in Washington, D.C., and I didn't, that's not what I wanted to do. So I called a friend of mine, fraternity brother of mine. Uh, his name is Don Roberts, who was a morning anchor at the Wavy TV 10 in Portsmouth, Virginia. He still is. He was also at the time a news director at had a small news team at WRAP AM radio. And I called Don and said, hey, I want to do that. Can you help the brother out? Right. And he said, I can give you plenty of experience, but I can't pay you any money. I don't have any money in the budget. Mm -hmm. So I was making $16,000 a year uh, in, at MCI in DC versus zero working with my man. And I talked right. to my mom and dad, and we chose zero. And I took my one suit and two ties and moved back to Norfolk and started my job. And I was a working journalist. I wasn't making any money, but he was right. He gave me a lot of good experience, let me make mistakes, let me, let me learn. It was, it was great. And ultimately, they found a little cash in the budget, and, and, and that was fine. But it was still mm -hmm. part-time. So that takes me to Pittsburgh uh, back in, I think it was 88 or 89, uh, at the waterfront in Virginia Beach, uh, the Labor Fest, Greek Fest riots, uh, the Labor Day fraternity sorority party that everyone used to go to. Uh, oh, that was, that, that, that's, that's a good party. People, people yeah. still do it. They just do it in different cities now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess at the time, Virginia Beach was like, we tired of y'all coming here. So <laughs> it, was, it was a clash, bro. I'm serious. And I, was, I think that same party moved up to Philadelphia. Yeah. Is that, fair, that, is that, that fair, Fairmont Park? Yeah, I think it's in Fairmont Park. So okay. all the different fraternities and sororities would get together and have a good time. So, yeah. but keep going, keep going. We can oh, go, so, that's a rabbit hole. We, we can go down another time. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so, it was, and so I was 
it was my job at the radio station was part time. So I had another part time gig at a record store right at the beach just so happened to be there. So when I, everything popped off, and the police were marching down the street with on horseback and people were rioting and, and throwing bricks through windows. It was a mess. I was documenting and reporting on it from my vantage point. And I did a lot of stories for the Sheridan Broadcasting Network, now American Urban Radio Networks, the, at the time the largest black owned radio network in the country. So I did a bunch of stories for them and then I inquired about positions and they had a job coming up on the local desk. And I went up and interviewed and they said, you know, job's yours if you want it. Wow. So I did. So we moved to Pittsburgh um, and I did local radio for three years and then moved over to the national desk for three years. In between that, did a little part time television. Uh, and in 1996 or seven, WPGH Fox 53 came into the market and I bugged my friend who was working over there as executive producer um, to put me on. Give me a spot. He's like, no. You really don't have a lot of TV experience. Mm -hmm. I, radio is great, but no TV. This is Market 17. People don't start in television in Market 17. Mm -hmm. So about six months after that, he needed someone because his weekend reporter left. He said, I'll bring you in temporarily. Mm. Be because And while I keep looking for someone with more experience. And that was fine with me. First weekend, they made me put everything on tape so I wouldn't mess it up. Second weekend, they let me go live. from I think it was live at the Pittsburgh Regatta. And it was a giant uh, party for people who don't know. They didn't have it last summer. They had some financial issues. But the regatta is at the point in downtown Pittsburgh where all three rivers meet. It was like 100,000 people. It was a boat show, party. It was it's a great event. And I was right in the middle. There were so many people down there. We had to do my live shot on top of the truck. Right. No place to stand on the ground. <laughs> so it was great. And it was tempor temporary for three months until news director pulled me into the office and said, hey, you want to work here full time? And I said, okay, I believe I can hang out with you fellas full time. Yes, we can do that. Right. So I went from reporter, uh, weekend anchor. They were looking for a main anchor. They hired someone. That person didn't want to come to Pittsburgh. I said, hey, I'm the weekend anchor. I think I can move up. They said, you know what? We think we'll do that. Probably because I saved them a little bit of money. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I was also, I was in house and I knew the market and I could you, do the gig. You had that, you had that blue collar mentality where it was like, it was more about leading into to your passions and finding the unique gift that you have and not letting anybody deny that opportunity for you. Yeah, just give me a chance and I'll show you, okay? Yes. So main anchor for three years, at the end of my contract, I just I compiled a tape and I sent it to a friend of mine who I used to work with at the network, the radio network in Pittsburgh. He's now here in Bristol um, at, the, at ESPN Okay. Uh, in the talent negotiations department. His name is Fred Brown. So I sent him a tape just to critique it because I'm not looking <laughs> to go into sports. I'm looking to go, I'm the news, like the Today Show, Good Morning America. That's what I wanted to do. So apparently he shows my tape to a bunch of people and they like it. So he calls me up. He said, hey man, they liked your tape. I said, who liked my tape? <laughs> I showed it to you. Why are you showing my tape to people? I sent that to you. He said, well, they like your tape. They want to bring you in for an audition. So audition for what? To come to ESPN. I said, Fred, I mean, I, I want, I'm a news person. I want to stay in news. I don't want to go to ESPN. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess my nosy wife was listening to the phone call. And she said, why don't you just go? I watch ESPN all the time. TV's always on SportsCenter. Why don't you just go? Fine. I'll go audition. <laughs> they brought in five guys. That was the third one. Okay. And I'd never done a highlight or whatever. So I did my... My, my shot, I wrote my audition. We write, all own, we write all of our own stuff. I wrote my audition, did the highlight, and had some fun with the highlight, and, and they liked it, and left. After I interviewed with a bunch of people, I left, went back to Pittsburgh. Didn't think much of it. My boy calls me. Hey, man, you did a great job. They want to hire you. What? Hire me for what? I said, come to, to mm -hmm. ESPN. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really want to do that, man. That's not my thing. He said, cool, I get it. If there's anything I can do for you, give me a holler. Next day, it calls me back. They really like you. So, right. Seriously? Well, tell me about the job. ESPN News, nights and weekends, don't mention the sports center. I didn't okay. care anyway because that, that wasn't my thing. I said, well, how much does it pay? And he gave me the range. And I said, well, I'm in, I'm in the range. I'm in that range now. And, you know, I don't know. The boy, he's three. And I want to move my wife's military background, moving from place to place. I don't want to do that. Plus... Connecticut is cold like Pittsburgh is not. 
Okay. <laughs> they're both. They're, they're both. I think they're both on the, on the same. You know, was it la latitude? Right? They're on the yes. same latitude. So yeah. I was just trying to. I was just making up excuses. You're just trying. To, you're just trying to find a way to get out of it. Yes, because I really do. I Why are you want... trying to get out of it? This. Is, I don't know. This, I was. Your, your wife said this is what you watch all the time. I know, because I was like I said, I was dumb. Okay, so. Um, I talked to my agent and he says, well, let's throw a number at them and see what they say. And they didn't meet it, but they got close. And we're like, oh my, we really need to think about this. Just think about it. Mm. So we thought about it back and forth, back and forth. While we're doing this back and forth, that nosy woman who told me to just go to do the audition right. calls, calls my buddy, Fred. Hey, Fred, is this a good opportunity for Jay? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> okay. He'll be there. Thanks, Fred. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> she 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 did all the negotiations for yes. you in the back in the she background. Yeah, behind every, every every great man, there's an even and better woman. Yeah. So finally decided to go, and uh, woke up the next morning. I'm not going. I didn't want to go, and woke up and she gave me that look that women give men when women know that the man is about to do something stupid, mm -hmm. but the man has no clue. But they know. Brought out the legal pad, lined out the middle pros and cons, and the Disney benefits alone made it the, the best the best decision that that she ever made. Because I'd have messed it up. <laughs> I, I I love that story because I was going to open up our our conversation by asking how many times you've been to Disney World, Disneyland, and Disney Europe, and all the rest of the Disney's because I think that's probably one of the best. That is one of the best benefits. It is. It's uh, it, and my nice little card. We can go in for free and and it's you get cool. the fast pass. Uh, yeah, we can get fast passes. Oh, uh, that the fast pass alone is one of the greatest. So, so let let's just continue on because I just want to also tell, remind people if you ask some questions in the comment section, oh yeah, Eric and uh, Jay will respond to some of those those questions that we'll be able to set up. And by the way, we're we're helping raise money for hashtag Give Together Now. Um, it seems like Fred saw those unique gifts in you that you didn't even know that you potentially had where what was was there a certain level of like what was uncertainty right because a lot of other people that would have had this opportunity i know that your child was young your wife mm -hmm. she was military so you didn't want to necessarily move was there something else that was lingering in the background that prevented you from saying okay this is the maybe one of the biggest opportunities why would i not want to go do this no it was just that i had i had tunnel vision. I saw a particular type of thing that I thought I was my lane I was supposed to stay in. And I just didn't consider this lane. And now mm -hmm. when I tell this story to young people, I tell them, don't be like me. Mm -hmm. Widen your lane, mm -hmm. because I don't want you to be a news person. I want you to be a storyteller. That's, that's yeah. your goal. Be a storyteller. Tell that story, whether it's a news story, a sports story, a medical story. Mm -hmm. You can uh, you could tell a story about this thing, water. <laughs> if you have a good photographer and you shoot it right, you talk about the water and the waves and all this stuff, you can tell a great story about that if you're just concentrating on being a storyteller. Mm -hmm. So once I got that out of my head and figured, all right, I can talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers just as good as I can talk about the Pittsburgh school board. Yeah. Okay, I'm here. Let's go. So, so in the end, it made you not only a a better person, and I mean, it made you a better person, but also made you a better host because that sort of well-rounded um, opportunity to be able to now attack the story from all sides consolidated itself within the, within this notion of of storytelling. I think so. I think so. I um, I I in I enjoy sports. I love sports. But I didn't come up in a way where I was had the the sports tunnel vision like the news tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. So I I think I could look at things a different way. And when news events happen within the sports world, right, I, I see those differently too. So and I I think that's what they saw in me someone who could who could interview who could write a story. Uh, who could sit on the desk for longer than four minutes because local sports gets no time. <laughs> right. I, I was doing an hour a night, so that was no problem. So I had the skill set. They saw the skill set in me that I hadn't seen yet. Mm. And, I pre and I appreciate their vision. <laughs> I do. What, what, if, if you were to, I know you answered this already, but in a different way, like, what is the main nugget of advice you would give to someone that's 
taking that leap, right? Because I think that leap is relevant not only in the world of sports, in the world of television, but in everything, right? Mm -hmm. Even as I play football, you know, I remember one of my friends when I was making the leap from professional football into the world of television, sometimes you got to bet on yourself. Sometimes yep. you just got to take a chance. Yep. Um, but it's also the people that are around you that are going to support you along the way. So yep. if, even if you don't have confidence in yourself, it, the other people around you will lift you up in order to sort of amplify your opportunity. So what advice do you give to people? Find some good people in your network that will do everything you just said, but will also curse you out when you need to be cursed out. <laughs> that, are not, that are not afraid to just tell it like it is. Right. Uh, those are the best friends to have. And also, Tiger, Tiger Woods used to always say, trust your swing. Mm. I mean, I'm sure many golfers said it, but Tiger sticks out in my head. Just trust yourself. Trust your ability. Trust, trust that once you get in the situation, everything that you have inside you up until that moment will get you out of that situation and you'll be fine. When did you finally trust yourself? Wow. That was, that's an incremental thing with me. Um, even from radio to, to um, from the beginning all the way through to news in Pittsburgh to now, you would have a, an interview or do a story, go out and write a package, have a live shot, and it would just, something would just click. And you mm. it, it incrementally go, oh, okay. Oh, I, whoa, that was pretty good. Okay, I asked that question, I got a good answer. Dang, I could do this for a while. Yeah, it's, it's kind of been like that. So, and I still have those moments mm -hmm. and I'm glad for those moments because I don't want to be in a situation where I think I've arrived or, or whatever. I'm, I'm on this big platform, but I don't want to ever think of myself as, Ooh, I'm on this big platform. Right. I'm still me practicing, trying to get better every day. Like the practice of medicine. I call this the practice of journalism. And my job is to the next time I go into work, have a great day at work. And the next day, forget yesterday, have the next best day at work and keep going. That's my goal. Your, um, your friend, Jason Romano, interviewed ah. you, and uh, he was talking about um, you know, the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that what grounds you and keeps you genuine in a world where you are such an iconic individual that sits on the screen of, of every single household, you know, when they're looking at sports. And why you, why you got to say it like that? Now I'm nervous. Why are you nervous? <laughs> I know you don't get nervous. That's a lot of people. Um, you know, probably, yes. Um, foundation is key. If you, when people, young folks come to me and say, hey man, I want to work on my brand. I want to do this, I want to do that. Man, learn how to write first. Mm. Learn how to tell the story. I mean, forget all that brand stuff. Forget the catchphrases. Just do the highlight mm. first. Right. And, and make it a real story. Then come with all that stuff. Don't that is that's add on. That's the frosting. Give me the cake. Make make a cake for me first before you start putting frosting and sprinkles and all this other stuff on top. That's that's what I need you to do. Uh, which, by the way, I, I saw the episode where they brought the cake onto the set for you. And, uh, and, and I just want to put it out there. My birthday happens, happens to be February 22nd, 1978. What? I did not so, know that. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, as I'm, as I'm, as I'm going through all these different notes, I'm like, we have the same, same birthday. He, he, he's been in the industry of which I've loved for such, such a long time and, and done such an, an amazing job. You know, there's, there's some fraternal bonds here. I'm just so happy to be able to speak with you because it's like I feel like I'm just like looking at someone I've always wanted to talk to. Well, why are we not best friends? Well, now, now we are. All right. We have to be. <laughs> um, so for everybody joining right now, um, Jay Harris is, is, uh, is one of the uh, premier anchors at ESPN. He's talking to us. And then if you have any questions for him, uh, put those in the, in the comments section. And we're helping raise money for hashtag Give Together Now. Go to givetogethernow.org. We've raised a significant amount of money. And this money goes into the hands of people that have been financially affected by uh, COVID-19. Um, but also, I just want to let everybody know uh, not only can you just donate uh, money at givetogethernow.org, but you can also give kindness. And so um, here's what you have to do. Share what kindness looks like in your community, and, and $500 of direct cash assistance will be provided to one of up to 5,000 families impacted by COVID-19. Uh, post an act of kindness experience uh, or 
you did or experiencing tagging Stand Together Foundation at Stand Together Foundation using mm -hmm. hashtag Give Together Now, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram, share it, tag it, that's it. You know, one of our community moderators um, will see it and uh, an eligible family will receive $500. You can go to givetogethernow.org slash give dash kindness dash terms and conditions. So um, I, I had to make sure I got that in because it, it's very, very, there, there are so many people out there that need this, this money. And um, it's really about the communities that are around them that are gonna be able to facilitate, um, facilitate not only through our conversation, nuggets of hope that that can um, allow for survival but that money um, yeah. so what I guess the you know one of the things I always thought about um, from sports is that people always feel like once you go into sports that's that's all you are mm -hmm. you know how, how did how did you arrive at the moment when you said I don't just have to be sports I can actually take all the aspects of what I've learned from from the news world and politics and sports and I can kind of co-mingle that into sort of a more well-rounded um, uh, discussion about the game? It honestly, inside, it took me about, took me about a year at ESPN to, to get comfortable um, being, I guess, out of my element, mm -hmm. um, going through each season and getting a taste of everything and then starting it up again and, and then having that familiarity. So, it, 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 it took it took a second, but then once I realized that um, you know I I did it and I can do it, I was good. Right, but and then, and then go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, no, I'm listening to you. Go ahead. Keep going. Oh, no, I was just saying. And then and then when like one day when I was I got my schedule. Uh, this was actually this is about three months in. I got my schedule and the Saturday and Sunday sports center were on my schedule and I've been doing ESPN news. And I, I walked into the office. I said, um, I think y'all made a mistake because <laughs> it says, it says, it says sports center. And I don't, I don't do sports and I'm going to do ESPN news. It's like, nah, man, that's you. You earned it. Right. Good job. Okay. Thank you. So, you know, things like that happened. Did you and walk outside? Did you walk outside and have that silent, <laughs> silent yell to yourself and call your wife and say, "Oh my gosh!" Or you know, you had to get you had to get nervous because Sports Center is like a whole whole nother level. The Sports Center is a whole nother level. I was nervous. I was nervous until I did it the first time, and then I realized what everyone was telling me that if you can do ESPN News, mm -hmm. you can do anything. Mm -hmm. because ESPN news, I miss ESPN news. I mean, seriously, the 22 minutes and you have the, we have the world in a half hour, the, it, the, the immediacy, the, uh, the breaking news, the having to think off the top of your head, the, um, the writing, the highlights, the, the highlight would roll and literally the game would end and they have some shots already prepared. They'd slide it across the desk and the video is already going. You just got to catch up and go. And the researcher would sit next to you and hand you a card and you have to look at the highlight and look at the research numbers and try to marry different facts with the pictures and, and all that stuff was coming at you like this. You, you would sit down in the chair to start the show and the producer would already have timed out certain things. All right, we're going to kill A7 through 11, bring up D22 and 23 <laughs> and, and add, and we're going to bump B22 and A16. And you're like, oh my God, I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think I, I don't think a lot of people realize how many people are behind the scenes when it comes to a production that's like that. Yeah. People, people might know about the producer, but they don't know about the rest of the community that's really built through ESPN that fuels um, fuels the words that 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 you pass along, as you say, as a conduit to other people. I tell people if it weren't for the, the researchers and the production assistants, we'd we'd fall apart because they're literally the backbone of what we do i mean every everyone contributes we we sit in the pod together our little grouping and, and there's a coordinating producer and the producer and the director and the, maybe the assistant director the the anchors of course and the researcher and then you go down in the studio and the audio technicians and and the video ops and everyone who makes sure the cameras are ready and, and shading so the colors look good and <laughs> right. make, the makeup folks who who I, I miss tremendously who aren't there right now. Hopefully they can come back soon because uh, I, I can do my own makeup, but they can do it better. <laughs> they can do it much better. 
all those people, it's a giant team. It's a huge team. And, and I'm thankful for every one of them. Was there a, when you first got to ESPN or as you were going through ESPN or you've been there, was there someone in particular that you felt the most akin to um, that became a part of that, that community that you held so tightly, you know, whether they're here or they're not here, somebody so close to you? Probably a few. I mean, there were there were people that I looked up to um, and watched intently before I got there, who ended up being friends and, and mentors. Uh, one was in particular was Bob Lee. Um, Robin Roberts was another. I got to do a, a, a football season doing the 9 a.m. Sports Center on a Sunday with her, and that was mm -hmm. that was really cool. Uh, but watching watching Bob because I was a serious outside the lines head, still am. And I remember the first time I got to do a show with him and I would, I'm sitting at my computer and I'm looking across and it's Bob Lee. He's sitting there. We're going to anchor sports center together. And I'm, I'm in awe. I couldn't believe it. And we get to the set and I'm getting ready. To, we're getting ready to do the show. And I keep looking at him and I think I reached over and I touched him. And he's like, what are you doing? I said, you're Bob Lee. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure he sees that I'm nervous and about to flip out. So about 15 seconds before the show starts, fist pump, gives me a fist pump. And he gives me the four words that have forever cemented my comfortability in my career. He says, don't F it up. And he didn't say right. F. He said, he said the word, don't blank it up. And it made me laugh. And we both laughed. And we came on TV laughing. And it was fantastic. Um, but it was, it's like, it's a, it's a collegial atmosphere. Uh, there's camaraderie. There's competition. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a family. Um, I could probably tell that same story with a bunch of other people. It's just, it's just that kind of place. But in, in the same way um, that you sat down with Bob and he's done so many great things interviewing so many others, you've done the exact same thing, right? You've been able to just, you know, you've said, you know, an interview is just a conversation mm -hmm. with someone. Uh, I think one of the things that I, I, I read or I was listening to uh, that you were talking about, you know, you have that conversation with someone and you bring um, some level of grounding to the discussion where everybody's just simply human. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you take that? How do you continue to take that approach when you've entered people like, you know, LeBron and, and so many other like uh, amazing athletes that a lot of people might not see them just as human. They see them as these like super, you know, superheroes. Because everyone truly has a story. Uh, and everyone's story is unique. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter who it is that I'm, I'm scheduled to talk to. There's something Im important in this person that it is my job to ask the right questions to bring out, whether it's talking about them, talking about a particular story. Um, I, when I read or see people say, oh, that was, you know, that was, um, I had a bad interview. That person really didn't want to, didn't want to interview Chances are it wasn't that person. It wasn't the interviewee. It was the interviewer who didn't ask good, open-ended questions to make someone have to think and give you a response. Um, so it is my responsibility to do that because not only am I trying to learn something, there's those millions of people that you talked about earlier who are watching this and they yeah. need to get something out of this too. So, and that's on me. And it, it's, I relish the challenge. Um, I remember I was in LA walking around one of the parks and I saw Larry King mm -hmm. and, and I asked, I, I was like, Oh my gosh, this is Larry King. And I went up and I asked him, I said, Larry, how do you do, how, how are you so good at your interviews? And he said, it's not about you. Yep. It's about them. Yep. I can, I'll never forget having that conversation with him and ever since that moment, you know, is take yourself out. Yeah. Take yourself out of the equation. And you've had an opportunity. Um, you know, you talk all the time about that, those eight minutes of straight through a specific <laughs> interview. And, I, and people don't realize like eight minutes of content that you never cut. I mean, that had to be some powerful, powerful content that, you know, you, you all just saw. I mean, how did, how did you do that? I don't know. And I, I need to find it, actually. It's probably downstairs in a box on a DVD. But uh, it was after LeBron, I think, got his second MVP. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was leaving and he wouldn't tell me where he was going because I asked. Um, but we just we just talked, man. 
we, it was just one of those where we just, I asked the basketball stuff. We talked mm -hmm. family. We talked about, is this a sports center commercial? Where Scott Van Pelt took his chair and he's like, yeah, tell Scott, I'll come back to get my chair. <laughs> and we just, we just talked and we pre-taped it and they just thought it was good. And we just ran the first four, four minutes and took commercial and ran the second four minutes. It was, it was a good conversation. Mm. One of the, uh, I want to ask this question directly. Uh, it's, you said it's easier to remember who you are than trying to be someone else on television. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel it's important to bring your unique perspective to the show? I want to make sure I ask that, the, you know, some, sometimes you have questions and you can kind of shape them in different ways, but that unique perspective um, gives, that unique perspective is, is something that, it's only just you. So why do you feel like that's that's important? Because it's only just me. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only one with that perspective. And it makes me authentically me. And it's easier to be authentically you than to um, put on a facade and pretend you're, you're someone else because then you forget who you are day to day. Mm -hmm. um, in the at the beginning of this business, uh, when you get into it, I mean, maybe you you when you were playing football, you would see people do certain things, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna snatch that move, I'm gonna <laughs> snatch right. that, and you you're gathering information, and it mm. all becomes you, right? So the, the TV is the same thing. You gather questions and interview bits, and from like Peter Jennings or Brian Gumble or whoever, and you just gather little things. And then you smash them all up in you and you realize that, oh, okay, this is who I am now. This is in me. And you either, you can push that stuff out and, and become you or you can make it part of you. But you're the only one that has that. So that, I, Stuart Scott told me that. Just be authentically you. Do yeah. You. Rest, rest in peace, uh, Stu Scott. He was, a, he was a good friend of mine as well and taught me a lot. Do you, do you think... Um, in this new age of television, that that is that is taught, you know, that notion of, of empathy and and being able to sort of identify with the other person. I honestly don't know what is taught because it, it's just so different now. There's so much media that we have to consume, uh, and there's a we have to keep churning out content. So actually, mm -hmm. like sitting down and and mentoring someone and critiquing tapes and stuff. I, I don't know how much of that really goes on anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 look at, I look at the media now and I think that it's, it's a challenging situation uh, because you have, uh, you know, you have this amount of content that's always coming in all at the same time and everybody's trying to pick it apart and piece it and, and, and make, it, make it their own, but it's just, it's just so much. Um, What's the most important thing you can give uh, to viewers on, on a nightly, nightly basis? I mean, you know, you're on, on the show all the time. What's the most important thing that you're trying to communicate to them? That changes, every, on, on, that changes on a daily basis. My job as a sports center anchor is to present the news of the day. Right. To, to, to whatever that we have determined behind the scenes that create, that's created this rundown and, and this show. My job is to execute that, whatever it is, uh, highlights, stories, interviews, whatever it is. So honestly, I, I try to take it a block at a time. We're going to do the A block. All right, done. Now let's go to the B block. And at that moment, that's the most important thing of my day right there. Mm -hmm. And as that's done, let's go to the next one. And in that moment, that's the most important thing of my day. And if I keep making every moment the most important moment of my day, that's a pretty good day. Who's the, who's your biggest critic? You're looking at him. God, I hate me sometimes. <laughs> I, I cannot, I, I cannot, I pick myself apart. It is, it's kind of funny to watch mm. actually. Um, I'm the, I'm my biggest critic. Everybody else laughs at me. Everybody knows I'm, <laughs> I'm sure there's some, some times when, when you come home and your wife is uh, evaluated your, your last delivery. What? Man, first of all, <laughs> they don't watch. They don't watch. They yeah, they do. do. No, they don't. They definitely watch. <laughs> Sometimes kids don't watch no more. Hey, did you watch the show? Uh, yeah, no, Dad, not not anymore. Didn't didn't watch the show. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Um, 
every now and then I'll get that. And, and I, I like it, but nothing can, no one can critique me like I can critique myself. Um, a couple more questions before we get into the questions from the audience. Okay. Um, what, um, you know, what's, what, what's some of the best advice that you'd like to pass on to people that are sitting at home right now thinking to themselves, I want to be where Jay is? What, what's, what's the advice for them so that they can become better um, qualified to do what you do? Do you. That's my advice. That's my Stuart Scott advice. Do you. Be authentically you. Add to that. Be solid in your foundations. I, mm -hmm. I, did, one, I did one show with Stuart because I worked in the early evenings. He was always at night. But we did one sports center together. Right. And watching him, not the, not the booyah, not the cooler on the other side of the pillow, the, the master tactician in writing and telling a story in, in harassing the researcher for particular research notes to make his highlight story better, to coming up with creative lead-ins and, and just and to make it better. Strengthen your foundations and, and everything else will come. Um, Miss Westchester asked the question, how do you think the sports world, world will look post-COVID? Ooh, that's a great question. I have no idea. Hopefully, we'll figure out a way to, even if we have to reduce uh, crowd size, we'll figure out a way to have fans. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll, hopefully, we'll figure out a vaccine so we can mm -hmm. go semi back to normal, you know. Uh, but I, I don't know. I think a lot of the sports world depends on what the, the outside world does and, and how, much, um, how much work happens. With, with testing and, and making sure everyone's healthy and, and the economy, that, that's going to affect the sports world from outside in, not inside out. Right. So Tina Turner asks, favorite sports center guest? I like this question. Favorite, favorite My, guest? Favorite sports center guest? Whoo. That's a tough one. I'm going to have to think about that for a minute because there have been so many. Um, I mean, I'd imagine, you know, you, there's, there's so many people that whether they show up by a surprise or their plan for the day that you might have thought about them in one way, but then all of a sudden they surprise you maybe in, in a different way. Anybody? Maybe Bill Walton. And you mentioned earlier the, the cake on the set when he it was my birthday. And he brought the cake out and he was singing happy birthday. Right. God knows how much money we had to pay for that, sing, him singing happy <laughs> birthday. Um, and because everyone looks at Bill Walton, they think, oh, look, he's a Grateful Dead and the tie-dye T-shirt and, and whatever. Oh, he's a funny guy. He's a really smart, thoughtful, compassionate human being that if you, you go down under the layers of, of this funny guy who likes to pick on Dave Pash all the time, you'll, you'll, he's a gem. He, he's just a gem. And I probably met a lot of people like that because they're, you know, they're, they do their job. Like you, you wear a helmet, take the helmet mm -hmm. off, and you're the person. I met a lot of good people. So I don't know if I can pick one, but I'll use that one for this example. Uh, do you ever feel a, a responsibility if you've seen something else in somebody, but people have perceived them differently to help change that narrative? Oh, yeah. Oh, all the time, especially when I know that narrative is 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 not true. Mm. Um, everyone has bad days. Everyone is going through something. So not everyone's going to have a great show. Not everyone's going to have a great whatever. Um, but that a bad show can't mark a person for the rest of their career. A bad uh, interview can't mark a person for the rest of their career. Everyone needs that leeway to, to, to have that, yeah, that was not my best moment because we all have them. So whenever that happens, yeah, I will pull them aside and go, hey, man, just let it go. Or hey, girl, just let it go. All right, so one story real fast. Um, last question. Um, so everybody knows we're helping raise money for Hashtag Give Together Now, and I wanted to share a story about a young lady named Tarlisha from okay. California. She said, Thank you is not enough to express my gratefulness. Your partnership has allowed my family to maintain 
some form of normalcy during such a chaotic and uncertain time. You've allowed me for me to provide for my family items that were much needed within our home, dish soap, bath soap, socks, um, food for our, my kids. Not only do I have, uh, not only have you allowed me to maintain electricity in my home, but you have given me an opportunity to breathe again. During such an unprecedented time as now, taking a deep breath is a luxury and being able to have comfort and peace with all that surround us has been immeasurable. Thank you uh, for thinking about us. That was from Tarlisha, and that's ultimately what this is what this is all about. And I and I know as, as we're parting, uh, I I love this is one of my favorite questions um, because I think it speaks to um, the true nature of who somebody is. Um, when you go into your your job now that you've you know secure, I mean you're going to be in this business for a long time at least for another three and a half years at least for another three and a half years <laughs> when, when it comes when it comes to legacy um when what do you want your your legacy to be Ooh. he wasn't perfect but he tried his best and he cared about people along the way mm -hmm. um that um all of the lessons that is grandmother taught him at the end of a switch he learned <laughs> <laughs> and tried to pass them on. Um, I just, I just try to get better every day. Um, and I think if we all just try and be better people like every day, no one is perfect, but just try to be a little bit better every day and treat each other a little bit better every day. Mm. I think we'll be all right. So if that's if that's if that could be my legacy, that'd be great. And and he and he paid off uh, his his wife's and his son's student loans on time. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wanted to say thank you because I think you've helped all of us uh, become better today, and everybody that's watching helping them become better today as we continue into the the rest of the of the days. So Jay, thank you. Um, I hope everybody. Uh, out there has been encouraged and inspired by um, Jay's message of leaning into your job, accepting, challenging yourself, taking the leaps of faith, being your authentic uh, self of who you are. Um, thank you so much for joining Jay. Um, our next guest is Tuesday, May 12th at 7 p.m. with country singer K. Nane Smith. Um, he'll be talking with us, sharing stories and playing some playing some music. Jay, again, thank you so much for, for joining us. Appreciate uh, you. I appreciate you, and I appreciate our birthdays. Yes. 222. Yes. And all the other ways that we're connected. I look forward to continuing this dialogue even uh, into the future. Um, and stay safe and um, stay healthy. You too, and, brother. And congratulations on everything. Thank you, brother. You too. All right. Thank I'll you, talk brother. to you later. All right.